All right, so we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy. And Gibbs free energy is talking about the spontane spontaneity of a reaction. If, is, does a reaction occur without outside intervention, or does it require some sort of outside help, electricity or whatever it may be, to get the reaction going? Well, Gibbs actually put together a combination of um, entropy and enthalpy functions and made, to get, made our new uh, an equation that actually tells us if something's spontaneous or not. Because we know it depends on enthalpy. We like the products to be lower in energy. We also like things to be very messy and disorderly. We have to like to have high entropy and low enthalpy. So um, he put the t them t together into this formula. So let's actually read what he said. What he did was he defined a combination of enthalpy entropy function that determined the, spon the spontaneity of a process over the amount of energy that is left after the reaction takes place. Okay, so after this combination, we can get the amount of energy that is actually released or gained during this reaction. Okay, so our free energy, our delta G is going to be the free energy, um, is measured in kilojoules or some sort of measurement of energy. So it could be kilojoules, joules, calories, whatever it may be. Enthalpy, which is the amount of energy that's either gained or needed for the reaction to occur, um, is also measured in kilojoules, or we want to make sure that these two are the same. If this is measured in joules, this must also be measured in joules. We want to make sure those are identical. Subtracted from the temperature, the temperature should be in Kelvin, but you can also see it in degrees Celsius, and that is actually dependent, dependent on the units of entropy. Entropy is a measurement of disorder, how chaotic something is, so, um, or how messy something is. So that is going to be measured in kilojoules per Kelvin, typically, um, but these must be the same, and then these must be the same units, so before we can actually have the, um, do the mathematical equation to get the correct answer. Okay, so this, the delta G is what's actually uh, going to determine if something's spontaneous or not. It's a combination of all these things. And um, the sign of it is going to tell, tell us if the reaction is spontaneous or not. So let's look at some information and, deter and determine together if something's spontaneous. So for this sum reaction, it doesn't matter what it is, we have our delta H mean, um, is negative, meaning it releases energy. We like that. We like it released 232 kilojoules of energy. That's really, really good. We went from a high energy system to a low energy s system. We like that. Um, so, so far, all good. Our, our um, disorder, our delta S value, is 138 joules per Kelvin. Um, that's good, too. We increase disorder. We like increasing disorder. We like messiness. The universe likes to be more disorderly. So, this is good. So, we have exothermic high disorder at 273 Kelvin. That's fine. This is piece of information. Does this, um, is this reaction going to be spontaneous? My guess is yes. Yes, this whole reaction will be spontaneous. Okay, let's prove it to ourselves. Let's look at our formula again. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And let's plug everything in. So our delta H is negative 232 kilojoules minus the, our temperature, which is 273 Kelvin, times our delta S. And this is in joules. I want to make sure these units are the same, so I'm going to change this to kilojoules. So it's 0.138 kilojoules. kilojoules per Kelvin. And so when I multiply these together, I get a total of, let's see, negative 37.7 kilojoules. Negative 232 kilojoules minus, minus 37.7 kilojoules is going to give me negative 194.3 kilojoules. This is my delta G. Notice my delta G is negative. I like that. Negative delta G is very, very good. That means the reaction is going to be spontaneous, which we um, already proved to ourselves before, just looking at the information. So we like a negative delta G. So I'm going to write this up here just to make sure we don't forget. Delta G is negative for, in, order to, in order to be spontaneous. It must be negative. Spontaneous. Reaction. Okay, so we have to make sure our delta G is negative. So a combination of enthalpy and entropy is going to give us a negative delta G. Awesome. So let's go over here and, uh, and decipher some data. So we already discovered if we have a negative um, enthalpy, meaning we release energy, and we increase disorder, those are both good, both positive things. Anytime you have these two combinations, no matter what the temperature is, it will always be spontaneous. Always be spontaneous. Let's say we have a positive delta H, meaning we needed energy, we required energy for this reaction to occur, and we decrease our, en our entropy, meaning it got, things came, became more orderly. We don't like that combination. No matter what the temperature is, it's not good. So we're going to say this is never spontaneous. Okay, let's look at other combinations. 
So let's say we um, let's say it's endothermic, meaning we require energy for this to happen. Um, but disorder was very high, meaning we got lots of disorder. Well, that's when our temperature comes into play. So let's look at our formula again. And let's say, okay, we have a positive delta H, so this is positive, minus a positive delta S. Um, we want our overall equation to be negative. So this must be very high. We're going to want our temperature to be very high because we want this number to be very large because there's a negative sign in front of it. So we want our temperature to be very high. So at high temperatures, spontaneous. At low temperatures, non-spontaneous. And we probably would have to check it within the formula to make sure to determine what is high and what is low. Let's look at this combination. A negative, it's exothermic, which is good, but it also becomes more orderly, not good. So we're going to have to figure out which combination, what's going to happen to make it spontaneous. Let's look at this again. And we say our delta H is negative, which we like, minus a negative sign. So what's going to, hap what's going to happen is this is going to change it to a positive. So the temperature is going to have to be very low for this reaction to occur. We want this number to be low, so the negative overrides to make the overall combination of these guys negative. So at, we're going to say at low temperatures, it is spontaneous. At high temperatures, it is non-spontaneous. Okay. Um, so make sure we can remember these, but we also we should always probably check in the answer to put this in, a, in the formula to see if it works, if it's spontaneous or not. Um, sometimes you might come across a question that looks like this. We have cobalt plus sulfur plus oxygen gas giving me cobalt sulfate, um, cobalt 2 sulfate. This is a combination of formation reaction where the, the um, compound or substance is being formed by its elements. So this is a formation reaction, which is why my subscript F. And we're going to say it's at uh, ordinary conditions, or standard conditions. That's why I have the little superscript of the zero up top. And I'm saying it is exothermic. It releases um, 888.3 kilojoules for every mole. And it is also, um, it also is, goes down in disorder. It goes from lots of product particles to one particle. We don't really like that very much. So it actually decreases in entropy, decreases in disorder. So at what temperature will, will this reaction be spontaneous? Well, we have a negative delta H and a negative delta S. So we're going to say at lower temperatures it's spontaneous, at higher temperatures it's not spontaneous. But what is low and what is high? Well, an easy way to check that is to see when delta G is going to be zero. When delta G is zero, delta H is going to be negative 888.3. Um, I forgot an eight. Uh, kilojoules per mole. minus our temperature, which we're going to find out, times our delta S, which is negative 118.0 kilojoules per Kelvin. Okay, so then I'm going, I want to isolate my T, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 888.3. No, I'm not going to do that. Why am I doing that? Sorry. I'm going to add um, 888.3. I don't know where my math skills just went. So then I have, on this side, I'm going to have 888.3 kilojoules per mole equals negative, uh, actually it's going to be positive because negative times a negative is a positive. So it equals positive um, 118.0 times our te temperature. And then divide both sides by 118.0. Let's figure out what that is. Clear. Seven point five three Kelvin. This is when the reaction is going to be spontaneous. It's spontaneous at low temperatures. When the temperature gets higher than this, this is the threshold. Anything lower than this, it will be spontaneous. Um, anything higher than this, it will be non-spontaneous. So um, this is a question you might come across, and you might want to just always make it at zero so we know uh, when something's going to be spontaneous or not. Okay, um, that is Gibbs Free Energy in a Nutshell.